My name is Andy Cranenberg, and I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon practicing at Southern Oregon Orthopedics in Medford, Oregon. I grew up in Southern Oregon and did my internship and my residency training at Oregon Health Sciences University in Portland. And then I went down to the San Francisco Spine Institute for a year-long spine fellowship training program. And after that, I returned to Southern Oregon to join Southern Oregon Orthopedics and open my orthopedic spine and trauma practice. I treat all uh, conditions of the spine, including the cervical spine or neck, mid-back and low back or lumbar spine. And I also treat painful conditions of the pelvis, as well as doing surgery for orthopedic trauma, including fracture care. I've been in Southern Oregon practicing for approximately eight years. One of the common causes of low back pain that I commonly treat is the sacroiliac joint, also called the SI joint. The SI joint is an important joint that connects the spine to the pelvis. And actually, there are two SI joints, a left and a right, just like there are two knee joints or two hip joints. Uh, patients can be painful in one joint or the other, and sometimes patients are painful in both joints. And the SI joint has a very important role as a load transfer joint in transmitting weight-bearing forces through the spine into the hips and down into the lower extremities. One of the unique features of the SI joint is that it's a very difficult joint to unload, and so patients can have pain with standing or going upstairs, rising to a standing position from a seating position, or they can have pain with sitting or even with sleeping or rolling over in bed at night uh, because it's such a difficult joint to unload. The number of patients who have problems with their SI joint is probably higher than often gets diagnosed. And as a cause of chronic low back pain, probably about one in five patients has an SI joint problem as the major pain generator. Although in certain populations, for example, patients who've had prior lumbar fusion surgery, the prevalence of SI joint pain is probably much higher, approaching 40 or even 50%. Some of the symptoms that patients have with an SI joint uh, are pain in the low back or hip or buttock area. And patients can also feel this pain through to the front of their pelvis into the groin. It's also true that patients who have SI joint problems uh, will commonly have pain radiating down the leg. And in this way, it can mimic some of the other conditions in the spine. And Unfortunately, because of this, it often goes undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. When we're diagnosing SI joint pain, we start off by asking patients where their pain is felt and gathering a history, with certain parts of the patient history being very important. For example, a history of trauma uh, or a history of prior lumbar spine fusion surgery. That's followed up by a physical exam, which includes a neurologic exam, checking things like strength, sensation, and reflexes and then a palpatory exam, um, which basically means putting pressure on different parts of the low back and pelvis to try to provoke familiar feeling pain. There are a number of named provocative maneuvers that are designed to stress the SI joint and provoke patient's pain. And of course, we don't do this to make patients uncomfortable, but it gives us very useful diagnostic information. One of the very valuable diagnostic tools for the SI joint is a guided injection. And there are several professional organizations in spine and orthopedic surgery that support the injection as one of the important reference standard tests for diagnosis. And this involves having a needle put into the SI joint under guidance, usually a CT scan or fluoro scan, and injecting some combination of anti-inflammatory and numbing medicine, and then looking at how much relief a patient gets. Patients with SI joint pain are commonly very disabled by the condition. And because of this, it's very common for patients to seek out treatment options to try to manage their SI joint pain. There are a number of conservative or non-surgical options available for patients with sacroiliac joint pain that can be very helpful. And we generally encourage patients to work through these procedures because they can often be successful. Common conservative management tools for sacroiliac joint related pain would include things like over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medication as appropriate, icing and activity modifications, or avoiding activities that provoke SI joint pain. There are various injection procedures that can be done to help manage a painful sacroiliac joint. One of the mainstays of therapy for SI joint is physical therapy or exercise-based therapy in order to help strengthen the muscles, tendons, and ligaments supporting the sacroiliac joint. And some patients are very successful with this.
in patients for whom conservative measures fail, the iFuse procedure on the SI joint may be an option. The iFuse procedure is designed to permanently stabilize a sacroiliac joint uh, by fusing it together. I have done sacroiliac joint stabilizing surgeries for years with great success and historically did more of an open procedure that was effective for patients but had a long surgical time, a lengthier hospital stay, and a tougher recovery. And one of the very exciting things about the iFuse procedure is that it is much less invasive. The iFuse procedure involves making a small incision, usually three centimeters or less, over in the hip area, and then placing three triangular shaped titanium implants across the SI joint with the purpose of stabilizing it and ultimately fusing it. And this is what leads to pain relief. The procedure itself usually takes 20 to 30 minutes, and the length of stay in the facility is very short, with many patients electing to go home the same day. Uh, the recovery is also more rapid than with open procedures. I've been performing iFuse procedures on patients for years now with great success, and the outcomes in my practice are a close match to the outcomes that we see in the published studies, showing patient satisfaction rates of 80 to 90%. Which is very exciting for patients who are otherwise disabled by their sacroiliac joint pain. Mm -hmm.